welcome to the second episode of Central View. I'm your host, Alex Decker. Now let's take a look at what movies Kelsey and Eric picked for this edition of Movie Central. Hello and welcome back to another episode of Movie Central. I'm Kelsey Shore. And I'm Eric Ripper. Today we're going to be talking about non-Disney animated films. And what is the film you chose, Kelsey? Well, the film that I chose was 1997's Anastasia. It stars the voices of Meg Ryan, John Cusack, and Christopher Lloyd. I remember dancing to these songs when I was a little girl, and so it, it's really, really close to my heart, and it's a really very touching story that I have always enjoyed. You know what else had a good soundtrack? What else? Shrek. Oh, I love Shrek. The movie I chose was Shrek, who starred Mike Myers, Cameron Diaz, and Eddie Murphy. Shrek basically wakes up one morning and finds all these mythical creatures in his backyard, and he does not like it one bit. So he goes down to the kingdom to talk to Lord Farquaad, this short little guy, and asks him to have his swamp back. So he goes to the castle fighting all these guards, and Lord Farquaad likes the way he fights and asks him to go rescue Princess Fiona. Donkey and Shrek rescue the princess, and as they're trying to get back to the kingdom, Shrek overhears Donkey and Fiona communicate how she is actually an ogre, though he thinks that they're talking about how different feelings and Shrek develops a crush on Fiona. They end up being together after realizing that they have something in common, being an ogre. This is the perfect love movie as well because it shows that no matter who you are, you can find the perfect relationship. I don't understand. I'm supposed to be beautiful. But you are beautiful. Also, the film teaches not to judge a book by its cover. In the film, all the townspeople are afraid of Shrek just because he's an ogre, but they do not even have the chance to talk to him. So Shrek is bothered by that, but he doesn't show it as much until he reveals to Donkey that they just look at me, they scream, and ah, an ogre. But, but you can't tell me that if you saw Shrek in real life that you wouldn't be scared as well. I'd probably have to change my pants within the next five minutes. Oh, yes. Would you buy, rent, or pass your film? I would actually buy this film. Actually, I own it, to, speaking of. And because this film really has a special place in my heart, including the score, the historical value, now that I'm older, I can watch it over and over again and never get tired of it. It's just one of those timeless films that I feel like kids of all ages and even adults can love and enjoy. Would you buy, rent, or pass on your film? I would definitely buy Shrek. I mean, brings back memories when I was a kid. If I had to look back on the cartoons when I was growing up, Shrek would be one of them. It's got a great soundtrack and I just love the film so much, and I, I also enjoy the other films they made after it, but it cannot top the first film. It can never beat the original. Well, thank you for joining us for this episode of Movie Central. Tune in next week when we have our exciting episode dedicated to James Bond. See you next time. Where Kelsey and Eric take a look at two films from the James Bond franchise. Hello and welcome back to another episode of Movie Central. I'm Shore, Kelsey Shore. And I'm Ripper, Eric Ripper. And this episode is dedicated to a man named Bond. James, James Bond. Bond. Now Kelsey, what movie did you choose? Well, the film that I chose is the 1995 release, GoldenEye, starring Pierce Brosnan in his first James Bond appearance in his four film reign. So what film did you choose? I chose Quantum of Solace, which was released in 2008, and it followed up the movie Casino Royale. This is actually the first time a James Bond movie has followed up from the storyline of the previous movie. Basically, this movie is about James Bond and his partner, Camille, trying to stop the bad guy, Dominic Green, from taking most of this nation's water supply. Aspects of the film that I enjoyed is the different camera angles and camera work, how they showed footage of different countries, as in Italy, Chile, I mean, I've been out of the country several times, but nothing could compare to the footage that they got. There were many um, car chasing scenes, or scenes just in general of going after the enemy, and they showed shots within cities, so it would be like the suburban life. And then they also had long angle shots to show where Bond and Camille were. Daniel Craig, who plays James Bond, has no hesitation whatsoever. He will do whatever it takes to get his kill. I mean, whenever he kills someone, it seems like he has no sympathy whatsoever. Well, he does have a license to kill. That is true. <laughs> Even though the film is known to be just an action-packed film, there was comedy within it, too. At one point, James Bond's friend, Rene, was on the phone the whole time trying to communicate with someone, and the taxi driver just decided to keep going on about the government 
And it was just funny because they were trying to communicate with each other and it just did a whole, a whole mashup and I just thought it was funny. Even though I enjoyed this film, the media did not say this was the greatest James Bond movie of all time. And even though they said that, I thought it was an enjoyable film and I would still recommend seeing this to other James Bond lovers. Now that we talked about our two James Bond movies, which actor do you think played James Bond the best? Well, I have to go with the man that starred in my film. Pierce Brosnan, to me, is the epitome of what James Bond is. He's debonair, and he's suave, and he is very charismatic, and he can also kick some butt. And so I think, to me, there's nobody else that can play James Bond better. Well, I would have to say Daniel Craig. Uh, I feel like he's too rugged. He doesn't have that pretty boy, that British handsome charm to him. Well, I think that he's a great actor. And when I think of James Bond, I think of Daniel Craig. Everything about him fits him. Well, well, we'll have to agree to disagree. I guess so. Well, that about sums it up for this week about James Bond movies. Tune in next time when we look at our favorite villains. See you next time.